sponsored build with HD Model Works. Here we have the brand new Klingon Katinga 1350 scale kit. And oh my gosh, I'm, I'm sure happy about this. And I have the lighting kit as well. So this is really, really something to be excited about. I have just, what, about a year ago or so, I bought the the 537 scale Klingon uh, Katinga kit, the old one from the 70s, and uh, I was planning on getting a whole bunch of uh, uh, resin upgrade parts to make it look nice. So then shortly after I got that model kit, I saw on the internet that Polar Lights was announcing a large 350 scale studio accurate kit of the Katinga. And <laughs> that just just figures. Um, I'm, I'm sure I'll, I'll build that 537 kit eventually. Um, but anyhow, so yeah, so this is, a, this is a Japanese book called Star Trek Mechanics. And this has pictures of, like, almost everything. The only ship that I can think of that's not in here is the Grissom. And so this, this covers, like, the old, the, the TOS and up until the, the, the TNG movies. And let's find the Katinga in here. Now, these images are actually, uh, let's see, the, the alien vessels are in the... In the back here, the here we go. So now here's this is the original D7 from the original series, and now here is the Katinga. Now there's a lot of detail that's still not present in this this photo set here. You'll notice that like the the bridge dome is really smooth, okay, and um. <clears throat> Don't, um, I'm just reading through here real quick. I don't think it mentions anything. Um, I, I was, I had seen online that this is actually, this was made for, uh, Star Trek Phase 2, the TV show. And, uh, they needed to dress it up more for the big screen, so they added a lot more detail. See, like, you can see the detail's pretty sparse on top. The old AMT kit is more or less accurate to this version of the Katinga. So, yeah. But yeah, you could see that uh, they, they've, um, they've, they've dressed it up you know, a lot more in what you saw on screen. And so I had even looked at this book and I looked at the screen and I saw that this was actually not totally accurate. So yeah, I guess the, the studio they, they made the decision to dress up the ship more to make it, uh, you know, give it more detail for the big screen. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm not going to go through an entire unboxing of this kit because that has already been done before. And uh, people have already started their builds on this. Now, <clears throat> this is pretty great because... It gives you the color callouts for using testers enamel, which I'm sure most of these are also available as testers acrylics, I guess. And on the other side of the box, it provides Tamiya colors, Tamiya acrylics. Since I live in Japan, I'm going to be using the Tamiya acrylics, and uh, let me get out these paints for you right now. The instructions call for Tamiya XF5 flat green. XF-13 Japanese Army Green, XF-26 Deep Green, it's got a lot of greens, XF-69 NATO Black, XF-17 Sea Blue, XF-56 Metallic Gray, you see this is one of the, the larger paint bottles, this is getting kind of old, but it's still got some life in it. Um, XF87 Dark Iron, XF57 Buff, XF7 Red, and X27 Clear Red. Now, one other paint that and I had a hard time 
finding this in Japan, so uh, Jerry at HDA Model Works provided this for me. This is Model Master Acrylic Turn Signal Amber. And I've never seen this color before. You know, I've, I live in Japan, so don't really come across Model Master paints very much. Um, it's actually imported by Platts, who actually also imports these uh, 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 Star Trek kits. But uh, you don't see these on in, in, on display for sale very often. Uh, the only places I've seen these paints are in, in maybe in Tokyo or something. So this is like a pearlescent, shiny, orangish yellow color. It's pretty neat. Well, it's, I guess amber is orangish yellow. Not really sure how exactly this fits into the, the painting scheme of the ship, but you know whatever. So um, first thing I want to show you that I thought was really cool. Uh, I wasn't so happy about the the decals, and then I saw in a few pictures that actually kind of changed my mind. These decals are like kind of like a uh, the yellow is it's not just a yellow yellow, right? It's not like something you'd see in like on a Gundam kit or something like that. It, it doesn't. It's not like a clown color. It's actually like a, like a deep shiny uh, kind of like a pearlescent yellow, which is really great. And actually, it kind of matches this color here. So I don't know what's going on with that, but um, this is going to look really nice. Um, I I wasn't so happy about these before, but then I saw this on a on a completed model of this kit, and the 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 shining yellow of the decals really really stood out against the the, the dark greenish uh, hull color, and I thought that was really great. So Polar Lights has really really put in a, an outstanding effort into this kit. Um, I've, I've seen a lot of buildups of this and really if if somebody is going to be making aftermarket resin parts for accurizing, you know, whatever, uh, this, this kit is really, really fantastic on its own, I think. Um, I can't really see a whole lot being added to it, and which is really great. And this, this might be a first, uh, as, as far as I know, for Polar Light's uh, Star Trek kits. I mean, actually, I'm pretty sure it is the first. They actually have a, an optional resin bridge dome. And when I saw that, I'm like, oh, get out. That is so incredibly cool. To actually have an optional resin part in their kit. Now, the lighting kit comes with photo etch, which is another like, wow, you know, normally you have to get aftermarket, uh, like third, third party kind of a stuff for that. So the lighting kit, you know, ah, we'll look at that later, I suppose. But anyhow, here is the photo etch. Now Paragraphics is going to come out with some supplemental photo etch, uh, but they cannot, you know, by um, they, their agreement with Polar Lights round two that they are not going to be competing. They will they will not offer a competing product for this. So here you have the bridge windows and such, and it's just this is going to look really really cool. I'm sure that's nice. So yeah, Polar Lights has really really gone all out, and especially when you see. Companies like like Bandai had done the 70 second scale Millennium Falcon. It was like it went for like over like uh, 40,000 yen, which is like about like uh, $400. But you can get it for like close to half that amount, I think, elsewhere. Um, they had included photo etch and a, a lighting kit and everything. Uh, but from what I understand, this lighting kit really puts Bandai's lighting kits to, to, to shame. Because the, the, the Bandai lighting kits are really pretty primitive. So only with the lighting kit can you obtain this photo etch. Now, perhaps if enough people beg, the people who don't want to use the lighting kit, Polar Lights might release this separately. I don't know. Contact them. Let your voice be heard. But, uh, yeah, so this is just a red 
clear parts, which I imagine I will not need to use this, but you know, we'll see. Um, there's an issue with uh, the white lights that behind the the red clear parts that kind of makes the, the engines look purple. So I can imagine if you um, put enough coats of this clear red on those engines, it might kind of uh, correct the color. So I'm not going to be touching this very much for now. So yeah, um, as I said, other people have done unboxing videos. I don't see the point in doing that. And uh, what I'm going to do instead is just get started with this kit. So if you are going to be following along, uh, the instructions kind of depend on if you're going to be lighting the kit or not, because the order in, in which you put the, the parts together will have to change if you're going to be using the lighting. So I've already watched some builds of this kit on um, channels such as uh, Jim Paul Jr. and HPI Guy. Now, um, my the way I do my builds is I, I prefer to show, not just tell. Um, I'm not really criticizing the way other people will do builds, but uh, the way I prefer to do it, um, and, you know, the way they do it is fine. You know, they will basically show what they've done and explain what they've done. Uh, I, I prefer to actually show the actual build process, and um, that is um, one of the reasons why I was um, uh, offered to do this this uh, uh, sponsored build with HD Monoworks. So one thing I will point out is uh, I think what Jim Paul Jr. on his channel, he showed that I think it was this part. One of the wings was kind of like bent up and apparently uh, a batch of these kits didn't get through QC properly. The plastic hadn't fully cooled on the molds when they popped them out. And as a result, uh, it was kind of bent. Now you could kind of, you know, warm it up and maybe some hot water or whatever and soften it up and just use clamps to get it to to uh, uh, to behave properly but um, yeah I, I, fortunately I don't have to deal with that it looks like, I can't remember if it was the bottom or the top, see you know, this is the, I believe this is the bottom and yeah this is the bottom and this one is just fine as well so I don't have any problems with that um, Jerry at HDA, he said that the kit he opened for himself is is just fine as well. So, you know, your miles may vary. So, anyhow, I just wanted to point that out right away. Okay, so let's, uh, let's, let's get involved with the step-by-step -step process. Now, before I wash the parts here, I'm just going to take a look at this bridge dome here. So, this is the regular black styrene. And yeah, it looks pretty cool. Alright, it's not bad. When you compare it with uh, resin, though, yeah, I'm definitely going to be using the resin. I'm not really uh, an expert on this kind of thing, but I do know that resin, with resin, you can capture a lot finer, sharper details than you could with regular uh, injection styrene. So, uh, the level of detail is just really, really great on this. And like, for example, you got like this, uh, this little circular raised detail here, and you get the same thing here, but that, it just, it's a lot sharper around the ring. It just looks so much nicer. Um, a lot, lot sharper edges along this little, uh, uh, section here, this rectangular section. And just overall, it's just really, really cool. So definitely use this. So the cool thing about this kit is that you don't really need to use much light blocking with, uh, you know, because it already comes molded in black styrene. With this, however, you're going to have to light block it. Now, um, in America, people like to use tulip fabric paint. Now, I do not have that. However, I do have... Uh, paint that is 
has just been released this this past summer at the the Summer uh, Wonder Festival. This is by Model Casting. It is called Shade Black. This is uh, uh, Dorobo Hige, the the, the, the famous uh, sci-fi modeler. He had helped develop this special paint with Model Casting. So this is uh, I've used this uh, only once before, and uh, it does work well to light block. It's not your typical paint. I'm not really sure what exactly is different about it, but um, yeah, it, it is different. But you're not going to be able to find this outside of Japan, probably. So whatever. I'm just showing you. That's what I'm going to use here. Okay, so let's uh, let's get started with the actual building of this kit. So the instructions here will show that you will begin with this part here. And then you have this goes into here. Okay. And actually ooh. Um actually no, these parts are okay. I have noticed on these other parts on the on the runners though that these holes are not well drilled out but this part is actually all right um, maybe it's a bit of flash or something that is preventing them um, I don't know so this will fit in here like so and I got this part here so obviously this is not a snap kit I'm gonna have to use some glue and unfortunately, a lot of people, they don't like the idea of using glue because um, I, I would imagine, at least for myself, what I hated about gluing was the tester's glue and how stringy it got. And it was just really disgusting and nasty. But if you buy some decent glue, you don't have to worry about that. Um, this part here, this is like my, my... I've done this like maybe a few times already here. And just doing dry fits seems to be a little bit stubborn with how this fits together. Yeah, see, look at that. You gotta be careful here. I think, yeah, there we go. Gonna have to lift this up, I guess. So, like, this part has to go in first, but at the same time, this has to kind of go on top of that. So, it's a little bit, a little bit goofy here. Not really sure what's going on here. Oh, you know what? These are lights. I'm supposed to put lights in here. All right, I'm going to regroup here. Uh, take a look at this and see how I, if I should not yet glue this together. So here are the lights. Now this is just going to fit in here like so. It's not going to be a big deal. I thought it might have to like kind of sit in here and it might be kind of difficult to get it in and out but it looks like the lights just going to be sitting right here and I'll be securing those with probably epoxy glue I imagine um, actually I, I might uh, <laughs> mention here that this is a really snug fit like I haven't even glued this together and it's just it's holding together it's really nice it's not a snap fit but it is it is pretty snug so that that, that is kind of nice so i'm just going to get some mr cement sp i'm going to use this or you could use like a tamiya extra thin it doesn't matter really i guess so i'm just going to run the glue along here to have it kind of use the capillary action to get into the seams and to hold these pieces together. Okay. Okay, that's nice. Okay. Now, I'm just going to leave this alone. Other steps I can look at for now. Uh, I, oh, actually, yeah, yeah. To complete this uh, bulb section here, 
got got to do some drilling out of the windows. Yeah, for the, the the command tower, I guess I can do this real quick. This goes like here. Now I had to file this down a little bit after I, I cut out. The, the gate's kind of left over a little bit, but I guess it uh, should look all right after I prime this, I imagine. So, this part just uh, kind of sits right here. It's going to hold this together. Kind of just dab the glue on there. There we go. Great. Nice, nice, nice. And I might get this from the back side as well. I can don't have to worry about it looking pretty. I don't think. There we go. Oops, no, it goes here. Sorry, I made a mistake. Alright, great. And. Oh, look at that! What the heck? Kinda got my stupid ass fingerprint there. That's okay, I can just sand it down. Jeez, I guess it kinda leaked in there. Got it on my finger. Oh well, no worries about that. Okay, um. Yeah, I uh, definitely cannot claim to be a an expert, <clears throat> or really pro modeler or anything, but you will see my mistakes and see how I overcome them. Now, what I was uh, mentioning before, <clears throat> I'll put this in the light kit. Okay. Now we're not going to be doing any gluing right now. got these these windows to drill out here so if you are not lighting the kit I guess you don't have to worry about this um, or if you are lighting your kit and you're not using the lighting kit uh, you, you do want to open up the holes a bit more um, since I'm going to be using the lighting kit I will be using the photo etch <clears throat> and the photo etch just kind of uh, lays right down on top of these these parts here. So the holes are not quite adequate enough. I'm going to be following the instructions on the lighting kit. Let's put this dust collector underneath here. Now the instructions for the photo etch say in order to maximize the photo etch's potential, you want to get rid of all of these in, inside here, in between. So I'm going to open up these windows a bit more than what you see here. So I'm just going to use my rotary tool. And if you don't have one, you could... Ah, uh, shoot. You know what? It's not... It's not small enough. I mean, I could just... Kind of be careful, carefully just kind of going like this, but the holes, actually, um, hold on a second here, let me get the photo etch part out that lays on top of this, so the part that fits over these these windows here, this is it, it's this, this really super long one right here it goes around the, the bulb so if this is going to be laid down on top of that um, it won't matter how big the holes are so I can go just go ahead and drill all these out after all without worrying about that so it's just always good to be cautious
Now, of course, I want to make sure this is at the lowest setting because I don't want to melt the plastic because that would be pretty grody. There we go. I opened it up. So as you can see, this is going to be a quite a long process to do this. So I'll just skip ahead here. Okay, so <clears throat> okay, I've drilled these out. Doesn't look pretty, but it sh should be all covered up anyways pretty soon. So um, some of them actually kind of uh, lost the edge. Hopefully, hopefully it's going to be covered up. We shall see. I really, really hope I didn't screw that up. So I'm just gonna there, clip this off. And this is part number 39. And it's going to fit along this lip here. And I just realized... Crap. Gotta... Gotta cut these as well, actually. Got a couple of little windows right here that need to be... Cut up. nice I guess do the same over here So uh, what I had to do on the other parts here, I had to just kind of clean off the crap on the back here. You kind of got to get rid of all the excess here. Okay. There we go. So. I'm just going to hold this in place. Oops, upside down. There. Okay. I should get this over here, this crack here. There we go. Cool. Okay. And now the next part is 40. Oh, so this is 38, 37, here's 40. Okay. 
Oh yeah, so there's like a this little lip here. Okay, and that this is what's going to be attached to here, I, b I believe. Um, no, they got the 37 and 40. They they got in the, the instructions. Looks like they've got them backwards. That's not going to fit. Okay. Let's put this here. And that's going to fit. Okay, so. Where is my pencil? Where is my pen? Okay. This is 37. Oops. Well, unfortunately, my pen is broken. So, okay, anyhow, this is 40. This is 37. The, I heard that uh, there were some mistakes in the instruction booklet, and I found the first one. Okay. Okay, cool. Okay, so here we go. Let's. I just figured that if I put this into place, and then lay the the photo etch over it, I'll probably be able to get a, a good feel for how it's it's going to you know go on top and see which parts I have to focus on uh, drilling out more. Etc. Okay. There. And, oh shoot, yeah, I need to glue this here as well. Okay, great. This part doesn't really seem to be shaped right. There we go. And now, lastly, we're going to put this down. Okay. Here's my glass cutting mat. And this is actually my first time using it. Using a regular cutting mat, it kind of pushes down a little bit, and it's not good for when you are cutting photo etch. So I want to maintain the integrity at the shape of these pieces. So, I want to use a glass cutting mat instead of my regular cutting mat. There. To, to cut this out. Okay. 
Let's see if this comes out now. Not yet. Come on. Okay. Yeah. Come on, there we go. There. Okay. Now. Uh, of course, I'm not going to apply this until I'm ready to paint it, right? But. The way this goes is you have to line this up with the metal hole here, and then it just kind of uh, hugs around this. And then I'm just going to have to hold this up to the light and then kind of compare how this goes. But I see here, those are actually, those are not even. Those are, uh, those holes are for nothing, really. That's kind of weird. Huh. That is weird. Well. Hmm. Now oh, there's another little part here. I got some, my, my fingerprint in there. It looks kind of crappy. You know, I'm not really an expert at photo etch. Well, I'm not an expert at anything, really, but I'm not, I don't have a whole ton of experience using photo etch. So we'll just see, but I can see now there's some spaces where, you know, it might be better just to cut out more of this. I don't know. I'm going to hold, hold it up to light and take a look. All right, so if this is lined up properly, um, the, a lot of these, a whole lot of these windows do not line up. A lot of the holes are they are not analogous to the photo etch, so I'm gonna have to start really cutting out a whole lot more of this stuff. Like uh, for example, this doesn't even need to be opened up, as you can see here. When I put this in place, it just there's nothing there. And here, I, I need to open it up more over this way, so I'm gonna have to just spend a lot more time drilling these out, unfortunately. And I will have to keep. You know, holding this up and then you know comparing and going back and forth. So not really uh, impressed with that, but oh, whatever. I noticed it to my frustration. Uh, unfortunately, this needs to actually go over here instead. If, if you look at this here, uh, wait, how did it go? These holes actually line up with each other on top. This, see this hole here is supposed to be over here. Um, I, I had it in the wrong place and that's, that's why I spent all that time drilling all that crap out. I was able to kind of just kind of wiggle this loose, but this one needs to come out. So, if you've already glued something and you don't think it can uh, be removed, don't worry. If you're using this uh, thin cement, what you can do is you can uh, just put the glue down again. And what this glue does is it kind of reactivates the glue you already have there after about five minutes or so it's going to loosen up and when it loosens you'll be able to take it apart again so I just put this down maybe I can put it along the front here this is a neat trick I learned and some people don't know this trick so I'm just gonna let this sit for a while and uh, get back to you I, I have 
reapplied the glue several times and several minutes have passed. I've just been slowly rocking this back and forth. I gotta be careful though because this is pretty pretty fragile. I mean this is already broken here and it's broken here. I'm just hoping that the uh, the photo etch is gonna fit over it. So just the stupid instructions. So yeah, these are totally backwards from each other. So I hope I just I hope that my mistake will be useful to other people. So, jeez. Uh, Almost ready to come out. Almost ready. I'll just use my knife a little bit to encourage it. I think also because I was using the Mr. Cement SP instead of the Tamiya, that might have something to do with it. So I went ahead and just used the SP again. But. Uh, oh, oh. I see that? It's working. It's working. Okay. So it's almost all the way off now. Okay. Ah, almost ready to come out. Alright, I'm just going to skip ahead here for you. The part is finally off now. Finally. Now. What I'm going to do is just scrape off all of this gunk here. Uh, melted plastic and glue. Just a big mess right here. Okay, I'm going to clear this off some more, and then I'll replace these parts here. Alright, so now I'm going to put this here in place, and this is a much better fit. I was not paying attention to how it felt when I fit them together. So you can see here there's a stupid uh, smudge mark I have to sand down, and you know th that shows that this is in place here. So, I am going to re-glue this. So, this has been a, an annoying setback. So, it was just a matter of um, whoever is responsible for the graphics department or whoever is in charge of doing this uh, in these instructions here. It's a bit disappointing. Polar lights, but you know, I still love you. Oh, crap. Got a glob of stuff there. Gosh, man, it's, it's getting really messy here. <sighs> okay. Now, this is going to go here. Now there's a bit of a crack there, but I guess it doesn't matter because photo etch is going on top of this.
So here's the top here. Really fantastic detail. Really, really nice greeblies. Uh, I have already put this together. Check this out. So here, look at this. You see how, like, let me grab the photo edge here. You can actually slide it underneath here. You see that? You might say, oh my gosh, they made a mistake. Well, actually they didn't, because the studio model is like that. The Kronos 1 from Star Trek 6 is like that as well. So it's up to you if you want to uh, correct that or not. I think it looks better if it's down, but you know that that's just me, I guess. So these two halves here are the back of the tower here. I right, see that. Now there is another gap here. You can, I can actually stick the stir stick through there. This is supposed to be there. That is accurate. So again, you got these these two gaps here. These are actually accurate. That's just the way that the the actual uh, model, the the studio model is. Go figure. So the way this is going to fit in, you got this uh, socket for the LED. It goes down here. I'll just use the black plastic, but uh, it might be easier to see. Um, this is the front here. You got this little, little circular, little greebly here, and this is going to be facing back this way. So according to the instructions, this goes down like so, and you have these little tabs here. These teeth are not present in the the resin part, but there you go. This is how it's got to look. Neat, neat, neat. Well, this has been a long video. I'm going to end this here. So uh, I, I'm I'm really planning on uh, putting at least 90% of my modeling efforts into completing this. So uh, stay tuned. And this is going to be fun. I just got to be very careful and pay very close attention to the to the instructions. Um, I saw that there's there's going to be some sort of other um, uh, corrections in the future that they are are looking at addressing. So thanks for watching. Live long and prosper, guys. Bye. This build is brought to you by HDA Model Works. Are you looking for a great selection of science fiction related model kits online at great prices? Are you shopping for various LEDs of all sizes, LED tape, SMDs, and other electrical accessories for lighting your model kits? Are you looking for aftermarket items such as decals, photo etch, and resin parts? Is there an octopus living under your bed that steals the beer out of your fridge at night? Then look no further than HDA Model Works. It's a fantastic online retailing site where you can find lots of what you are looking for. I shop there a lot and I highly recommend it. And getting back to the octopus problem, I would recommend perhaps serving him an eviction notice.